welcome to another episode of 72 Pink Connector. With us this week, we have Tom. Good day. Josh. Hello. And Adam. Good evening. Ah, okay. Well, I, I didn't know if the Australian accent was going to happen or not after yeah, Tom did I that. Yeah, I didn't know. I was, I was trying, but no one followed me up on that. Thankfully. <laughs> yes, I, I, I <laughs> Sometimes we follow your really. lead, and sometimes we do not. I know. <laughs> that makes this me real is, sad. This is how this like. Sometimes we have <laughs> sense. Other times we do not. Oh. Uh, Actually, the other way around. Uh, some of us. I have a dollar. So you have I, no have, sense. I have I no need money. a dollar. Dollar, dollar. You need a dollar? You can have dollar it. Dollar is what I need. Okay, put, it, my, put it through the camera. Honest question. So am I the only one that feels what? this way? Um, anymore, everything's digital. We all use credit yeah. cards, debit cards, blah, blah, blah. I still feel really vulnerable if I don't have 20, 40 bucks in my wallet. No. Yeah, yeah no, I don't. No, I because don't. Because there's a I lot of times. I always try to keep cash on me. Yeah, I, there's a lot of times I end up in places that are cash only. Where? Honestly, or uh, there's a minimum. Look, look, your drug dealer why... needs to start taking Square. <laughs> like it's really easy to sign up, or or like Venmo, <laughs> PayPal, something. Man, you or, can't just keep paying for drugs with paper money. That's it's unhygienic. So this is not drugs, by the way. But there's something satisfying about buying something with actual money, like handing yeah. you physical dollars and them handing you whatever change and your item. Like at the next time, sometimes. Right? Next There's time Adam buys a car, he's going to get the that. loan in advance, get it yeah. in 20s, and then just go to the dealership with like oh, a God. backpack full of 20s. No, briefcase. <laughs> briefcase. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Who, sorry. Carries sorry. Yes. sorry. Who carries money in a backpack? Who, what are you, a savage? That sounds like a drug dealer. I was going to say, there I'm getting to the dealer. dealer. There I'm get, okay, it's out. It's out. I'm sorry. He, he knows now. He knows. Everyone Poor, knows. Strolling up to the dealership with a nice Jan Sport. <laughs> yeah, oh my god, yes. Yo, full, of, car. full of hundos. Yo, yo dog, <laughs> hook me up with that car. Hook me up with that, that ride, dog. Hey, hey can, hold on. Can you three-hole punch the this loan paperwork so I can put it in my trapper keeper? Thanks, dog. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. It's got puppies on the front. Don't make fun writing. of my organizational methods. <laughs> I like trapper keepers. You say aliens riding skateboards? <laughs> yeah. Ah. What? Pretty sure I had a trapper keeper with aliens riding skateboards on the front of it. Oh. That's that's nineties as or fuck. Or might have been a folder. Might have been a folder. No, no. What's nineties as fuck is that guy who made all the space dolphin or space sea oh, paintings. Jesus, yes. They were always that blue, black, purple. Oh my god, color I tones all over shit. it. Yeah, that that is yeah. what was nineties as fuck. And you get those in the not a binder. But the folders with three hole punches in them. I don't and remember the sleeves. Yeah, I don't remember like what kind of folders I had. I think it was just like plain colors. Your parents hated you. No, I think I just hated all the weird dolphin shit. I liked some of the dolphin shit when I was a kid. I did. I, but I was also the kid that saw like, you know, that really three wolves head faded with the moon. In the oh, my hell. God. <laughs> yes. I'm like, I want that as a notebook. That's a classic. <laughs> that's classic. That, that, that's how I rolled as a kid. Oh, shit. We got to call out not Josh. Thank you. Not Josh for your cheer. <laughs> Yeah, thanks. Wait, are not you Josh. cheering your own channel? Oh, wow. That's what like you, liking you, your own comment on Facebook, man. You just can't what do, you, do what that. What, what, what are you, what are you talking? That's not me. For the oh. record, oh, okay. on any cast ever, <laughs> nothing can go behind the scenes if Tom is on it. Yeah, ever, <laughs> ever. Yeah, that's not me. What are you talking about, Tom? <laughs> yeah, you mentioned Facebook. it's clearly not Josh. Yeah, clearly. It says it. it, it, says right it in okay. title, I was, I was confused. Me. I saw the Josh part, but I ignored the not part. Yeah, see, that's your first mistake. <laughs> <laughs> God damn. Got to get that self-love in there. What got do you mean? It's not, it's not me. You gotta, it's like a bit. I, Everyone wants that top <laughs> cheer, so you just got to bump it up by a cent. Get the next guy. <laughs> hey, you know what? That was that was Dobby and d that started that. Okay? Yeah, I know. Yeah. So yeah. They, they, they took me down initially, <laughs> and then they... <laughs> and and now and now I'm just playing playing the game. Sometimes you just got to play the game. It's all a game, dude. Yeah, I'm going to get game. in on this all game. game. <laughs> Everything's a game. Speaking of, how was y'all's week? Good. Good? Good. Pretty good. Yes. Any pagers? Is it? Uh, no, no pagers this week. Nice. It was, yeah, it was good. I actually got some work done. Nice. It was, uh, yeah, it was pretty work. productive. Work. Nice. Yeah. Uh, I also... My week was... Yeah. Yeah. What about, what about you, Adam? <laughs> My week was frustrating. Frustrating? Oh. What do you mean? What but, was that? Uh, 
Break it down. Thanks to, well, I was. I haven't played hardly any games this week, other than a few, which we'll talk about later. But I have been having Fortnite woes, oh. and everybody in here knows this. Um, thankfully, I've had a lot of help <clears throat> from our good friends Bird and Dlaz. They have been very much helping me troubleshoot my issues with not being able to play Fortnite Battle Royale. The show. Yeah. And and let that be a call out real every quick. Day. Yeah, call, call out for Thanks. our community. Our fucking community is awesome. Thanks, fellas. Thank you guys for the support. Yes, and thank you for the troubleshooting technical support. Um, I mean, th- it was as far as like Dlaz got in Team Viewer yesterday with me and was like looking through all my settings and trying to figure out what was up and getting in my router. And so it turns out my uh, Linksys router from 2008 might be a little old. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> if I bypass that bad boy, I can play matches no problem. So, uh, needless to say, Amazon got an order for a router, and it will be at my house on Tuesday. Nice, and nice. Coming Early Tuesday, Christmas. I'm going to be playing a lot of Battle Royale. Nice. We're super amped about that. Me and Tom have been playing that and really digging it. So we can't wait to get some games in with you. It's you know what's going to happen? Yeah, sure. All this build up, all this issue, finally going to be able to play it. You're going to install it, play three matches, and realize. I fucking hate this. I hate this. <laughs> no. I've played, I've played probably five matches overall. And that's enough for me to know that I like it. So oh, was that a... Oh, so this was working at first and they pushed an update that completely fucked you? Yep. Ah, yeah. So it's not necessarily that my router right. is a problem. It's my router in conjunction with whatever they have going on on their game. Because I can play other games, no problem. Okay. Odds are it would have been fixed eventually. But eventually, yeah. It's you have a nine year old router. It's time for, to get new, time yeah. for a new router anyway. <laughs> this just gave you the hey. nudge to do what probably needed to be yeah. done in a year or two anyway. <laughs> that's true. Yeah. It's always that's good true. when you get an excuse to buy new tech. That's like, yeah. <laughs> well, right? I'm, I don't get excited over networking equipment. Like, oh, oh dude, really? What? Why not? Dude, yeah, why not? <laughs> when I got the on hub, <laughs> yeah, I got pretty that's pumped. Good stuff. That's just a thing for me to be able to do what I need to do. It, there's nothing, there's no like bells and whistles and features for me to look into. And I'm I, not going to be looking through the instruction booklet. Like, I don't ooh, understand. I could do this now. And ooh, I could you're, do this. You're going to be I, AC now, aren't you? Yes. Yes. I, I made, he, so the one he had lined up to yeah. buy was an N. And I said, no, oh. if you're going to keep this shit for 10 years, you got to go AC. Yeah. So with AC, you will be able to You do- just plug it into the wall, man, and then you're done. Like, it's way better than direct current. It's more efficient over shorter distances. Like, no. fuck, man. AC is where it's at. Down with direct current. No. Edison was wrong. Anyway, uh, <laughs> so the transfer speeds on that are going to be so much nicer to where you could, like, if you got a Steam link or something in the future, you can use that without being landlined, and it'll work. I do that. Mm. I use my Steam link without landline, and it works over Well, AC. okay, hold on, hold on. Let's, let's, not, let's not get crazy here. The Steam link doesn't require anything over 100 megs. The Ethernet port is 100 meg port. It streams at about 30 regardless okay well i was yeah. just saying in general though it, it i know that inside network latency bullshit i had that issue with um computer to computer before yeah hmm. and i know since i've gotten the uh, ac i haven't had that issue and also i had a better router i can do it longer distance also as well which is i think nice. that's probably the better router more than anything well my old house but yeah definitely it's the older router or new router in home media though start doing it man it's great it's it ain't bad. It ain't bad. Either way, uh, maybe in the future, my house is small enough where I can, if I want to play games on my TV, I literally have a, an HDMI cable that wraps around that way behind the couch, and I can bring it forward to the TV, no problem. <laughs> oh, behind nice. the couch, long cable. Yeah, house, it's like a twenty foot cable, savage. and it goes around the border of my walls, so I'm not walking on it. And you don't then, have a dedicated TV PC. No, you, you, oh. you, you were saying how Tom, savage. You are, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he has a dedicated TV PC. Ask him about his dedicated streaming PC. That's the same yeah. thing. It's the same PC. <laughs> it's hooked to the TV and to the network. It does. It does both. No, no, I meant like. All I'm saying is, I've had better streaming. luck streaming. Yeah. I've had better luck and less problems streaming with my 2008 Linksys router in the past month than you have with all of your fancy stuff. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's, because, it's because all of, of all of the, the networking layers I got to go through. I've got to go through yeah. nine switches to get to my... In my 20 machine. countries. 
<laughs> oh, oh, come on, man. Only 20? You're oh. going to give me only 20? There's like at least 50 in there. <laughs> I'm streaming something. from Bermuda, man. No one knows. <laughs> no one knows where that triangle goes. It's next level. Next, next level Bermuda streams. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Josh? How's your week been going? So far, so good. I've been pretty busy. It's my um, birthday weekend this week. Well, last week, really. But yeah, this whole week has been like going to parties and stuff like that. So it's been it's been really good. Popping Advil and drinking some Pepto in the morning. Yeah, just you know, just riding out the week. It's been basically yeah, nonstop. Been those <laughs> hardcore Mountain Dew parties. He's been slamming dews oh, left and right. Shit, you man. know how it is. <laughs> Gotta keep that caffeine yeah. flow going. Don't mess with that stuff. Yeah. That'll kill you. Uh, Speaking of caffeine, <laughs> I've dramatically uh, lowered the amount of caffeine I've been consuming every day for the oh, past yeah? couple of weeks. Yeah, it's been that's going really well. the uh, best way to do that. It's uh, it's really bad for you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And for those of you mm, who so can't see us on the audio <sighs> yeah. medium, which most people are, Tom is mm. sipping coffee. It's uh, sipping. <laughs> yeah. mm. uh, Please don't make I that just, noise. Please that, don't make that noise again. That caffeine shit will kill you, man. It's so noise. bad. You gotta, you gotta <laughs> bring that, bring the mic extra close oh, and gotta, get that sip. Okay, no. I, do ha- I do have some left. Totally not working. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, I was actually reading some stuff about the whole caffeine intake, and um, there's been studies showing that even though tea per cup tends to have less than coffee, it tends to get people just as much juice in the morning, but yet since it has less coffee, the half-life doesn't take as long. Well, I shouldn't say that. After the half-life, less there's left caffeine left in the system. Oh. So people there's can also, sleep better with tea than coffee. I've also heard that the tannins in black, black tea... Um, actually affect the way your body takes that caffeine too and it makes it less less intense Hmm. that's why you like 72 biology connector even if you drink a lot of tea you never get like jittery Hmm. this is just like a nice smooth ride all the way through because i I need (laughs) i need i need caffeine my friend like (laughs) i went i went full basic i i I have a peppermint latte here it's delicious (laughs) I used to get like a 22 ounce coffee every morning from Dunkin' Donuts or McDonald's. Oh, right. Yeah. And now I'm down to a small coffee in the morning and then maybe like a cup of tea when I get home from work. See, I'm on the opposite route. Like I started doing double espresso in coffee and that's been amazing. Yeah. I. <laughs> you know what the gateway drug is though? So I know a lot of people who don't actually like coffee. The gateway drug is to get a hot chocolate and have them add a shot of espresso and then <laughs> add another shot and then move on to like cafe mochas and then eventually you're just drinking straight black coffee from the pot yeah my- okay so so dr uh, dr fuzzy gloves over here just made a really interesting comment and i have a story around this too oh cool. but uh he says um he says having an apple in the morning actually wakes you up more than coffee and I had a friend. Okay, so I had a friend that used to do this, and he he did used to uh, used to have a apple in, in the morning every morning. Um, but what he did is he went. We went up to a cabin, um, and we were all out there. It was a big party. We were just drinking. He drank more than anybody. He was obliterated, right? And in the morning, he got up earlier than anybody and was just like wandering around hanging out having a great time we're like what did you do like what did you what did you do he's like oh i just ate an apple and then did some tai chi and i was good <laughs> well shit all right <laughs> and we're just like we're just like what the fuck like, how did, <laughs> like this guy's got some sort of secret secret method he is he immortal can, iron fist can i can i do tai chi in the car on my way to work in the morning <laughs> yes. yeah just have an apple and do tai chi so <laughs> all right. yeah no it total it must absolutely work uh dr fuzzy gloves i think i, I think it's actually totally a thing i, I have sure heard that before that. I've, I've actually had that experience where you, you eat an apple in the morning for something about it just kind of gives you that a yeah. Well, to me, it's not always caffeine. Like, if I need something to kick mm-hmm. me to wake me up, I can get a non caffeine or non caffeinated soda, like a root beer or something like that. It's just highly carbonated, mm-hmm. 
and just the carbonation just like boom you just gotta get those endorphins flowing a little I just, bit i wonder yeah. if it's just like any sort of sustenance right whether it's caffeine not caffeine apple whatever it's some sort of intake to wake you up so how biology deep do we want to get on this cast because there, there is a degree to that you're right so i mean we could go we could go full crazy on this skip well, all the okay, video this games is a part of 72 food food connector. Let's just go in. this yeah. is not food connector this is getting like 72 anatomy. science connector yeah okay that's fine yeah, yeah but this is our podcast do it, we do it we drop it drop so what, <laughs> what it comes down to we, is in we your go where we want to go um <laughs> It comes down to the types of food you eat and everything, like um, the whole lectin craze that's going on and how they bind the carbohydrates or eat your stomach wall and all that stuff. But um, to a degree, the better foods you eat, your body will actually start to produce those into energy that you will feel as if it was caffeine and stuff. As well as um, if the microbes in your stomach are in a healthier state, they can help convert that to energy sooner rather than just go into waste. As well as it has to be high quality foods, not just donuts and shit that'll get you the sugar rush, but actual high quality foods, nice like high in fibers and high and fibers, um, complex carbohydrates. Yes, I was going to say more of your fruits and stuff like that, your natural sugars. But yes, it'll actually give your body more energy. So where you don't need caffeine, you can actually get fuel from food because food is supposed to be fuel. Mm-hmm. Shit, maybe I should pull the ripcord on, on coffee. On. This, I'll, I'll let this, you know this how is, that goes. This is some knowledge. <laughs> some knowledge. And Irk, Irk just totally well, like that's fucking not really dropped it. Dropping too much. I didn't he, get he too just deep. dropped knowledge. Like if you <laughs> you can come here for all of your learning. Drop out of college. Drop out of high school. Seventy two pin connector <laughs> is where you got to be. But no, yeah. Yeah, fuck, fuck it, fuck y'all. Anyway, yeah, <laughs> I enjoyed it. To be fair, and I agree with your points. <laughs> so anyway, on to gaming, maybe Don't gaming. We? Eh. No, we do eh, some of that eh. sometimes. All right, so how I do this is I add a, a little bit Adam, of so what have you been syrup? playing Aww. this week? <laughs> <laughs> all right, yeah, I'm probably a good person for this because it's I've played the least probably, so let's get this out of the way. <laughs> I, I did talk about trying to get Fortnite to work, and amidst my issues of trying it every day this week, I managed to get into one match yeah. somehow. Oh. How did that go? It, With your router or yeah. actually hardwired? Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah, like in the middle of the week, one day it just worked, one match, and then immediately would not work again. Huh. So I played one match of Fortnite this week, and um, it actually went pretty well. I got a couple kills. Um, I think I made like top 15 or so in that match. Oh, hell yeah. Nice, dude. Um, it was fun. I'm looking forward to finally playing through it more now that I'm getting my router situation sorted out. But... uh it's a lot of fun it doesn't have the it doesn't seem to have like the the laggy crappiness of battlegrounds so that's kind of refreshing it feels more stable that's what i got yeah. from it. and then no. played a little rocket league no surprise there i actually played very little rocket league i think i played today and yesterday and i didn't play at all the rest of the week that's crazy for you. For me, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> kind of kind of weaning off of it and onto other things. But with it's that like a, said, like a nicotine patch or something. Yeah. Did you watch much Rocket League? I did. I watched some today. Um I didn't get to see much yesterday. Uh um how right about now the yeah. RL, the RLCS yes. World Championships are going on right now. Uh they're LAN, you know, super tournament. They're playing for a bunch of money all the time. It's teams. Worlds. They call it's it worlds. worlds now, yeah. Yeah. They call it worlds yeah. now. Yeah, they consider it worlds because now there's so many lands that are popping up. Um, this is worlds. Okay, I kind of like, like the RLCS one. though. The, it is RLCS. RLCS. They just consider RLCS it consider world considered. championship, right? Oh, okay, yeah. Instead of calling it the live finals because every other tournament has live finals, right? But um, it's been really good from what I've seen. Um. Like I said, I didn't get to watch that much of it. I watched a little bit this morning, ended up taking a nap, and then watched the uh, last game of the day, which was really good series, really excellent series. G2 is finally doing well. Uh, G2 is like one of the, the the more popular teams in North America, and they, they basically won the first um, championship, and then they did some member swaps, and haven't really qualified for the lands until now. That's the one right. with J Naps, well. 
J Naps and J Naps. Um, uh, uh, the other big Cronovi. Cronovi Rizzo, and yeah, Rizzo. Rizzo is a big streamer, and Cronovi is like the he was the first super amazing player in Rocket League. He's probably the most popular player. As far as or more most famous player, I guess oh, no, definitely turbo, most famous. Turbo, I would man. say, I, I would say that the most turbo. popular one would be like Sizz and Rizzo for sure. Sizz and Rizzo would probably be the yeah. Most they've captured a lot with their YouTube stuff, right? But um, yeah, the la- the last series of the day today with G two and uh, and uh, G two and Market, excellent series. Definitely give that a watch. And there were there were other good series overall too. It's been a, a hell of a tournament. Yeah, I yeah was I'm surprised say... OCE did so well. Like that's the one thing yeah. that I was looking at um going into this. Like OCE is a like you have North America and you have Europe and those those are the two powerhouses that kind of duke it out. And OCE mm-hmm. was kind of introduced last series uh you know, on the last one. I think they might have been around the time before. I think it was just the last one though. But um they basically just come in, they don't have they don't have the um like the the amount of teams like the great teams that are in North America and Europe because OC kind of got in later. So just seeing seeing them come in and do really well this series was just awesome. Just so good to see them like pick it up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but now right. they're 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 on the level now. It, it's pretty apparent that they're that they're there. I didn't get to watch any today. I had it up for getting the rewards, but yesterday that <laughs> last match of the day with Cloud Nine was insane. I mean, oh yeah! Yesterday's Cloud Nine match was absolutely nuts. Went to the fifth match overtime, final match of the day. It's really nice. Went like two minutes deep into OT. But yeah, um, nice. I think the RLCS this year, so far from what I've been seeing, it's been really, really good matches. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you guys uh, are definitely definitely, definitely going to watch some tomorrow. Um, I think it starts at noon EST. Yeah, if anybody's tomorrow. around that's watching yeah. this, join our watch party. We're we're yeah. trying to. Uh, you know, the last, uh, what was it? There's a number of ones that we've done. We've done we it for the uh, um, League of Rockets. Stuff we did League too. of Rockets. Yeah, all the League of Rockets. We had a big watch party for. Um, le- mm-hmm. The watch party is really fun. You guys should come and uh, hang out. Join the Discord. Join the, the RLCS watch party thing. And people might follow you into that channel. If there's nobody in there, still pop in. And then other people will see, hey, somebody's watching. And then yeah, absolutely. People be join in. We talk about the games and watch them together it's it's good yeah I we'll be there that, for uh, sure a few years back when watching ti and it was just great it's so much mm-hmm. better watching a lot better sports with people to be able to yes you know, yell and cheer and, oh, oh yeah god damn it how did he fucking miss that yeah, yeah. it's <laughs> yeah. just it's great so, this is almost as good as being able to go to beat ups with friends it's the next best thing yeah if you yeah, can't yeah, go to yeah, a sports bar with your friends this is where to be but hey hey <laughs> yeah. in our lifetime We'll be able to go to a sports bar with our friends and watch RLCS, guaranteed. Yeah, we already can. Oh yeah, for sure. I, guess that's you, true. I think you already can. I guess that's true. Uh, the last time I went to B-Dubs, I actually watched a, a Counter Strike tournament on ESPN. In all, <laughs> in all fairness, it, it, they showed uh, they showed Rocket League at my grandma's bingo. So <laughs> what? <laughs> Holy shit! Yeah, really? We, ta- we talked about this at, uh, on one of the previous casts, but they did the uh, um, they did the uh, what is it? Um, I forgot who did it. NBC, the NBC and uh, oh, TBT yeah, Invitational. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, well, they were putting that on TV on NBC, and mm-hmm. they played it during uh, <laughs> during their whole bingo thing. It was it was really <laughs> hilarious. That's everyone fantastic. had no idea what was going on. <laughs> <laughs> that is wonderful. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, but yeah, good time. Uh, or, or LCS, check it out. Oh, absolutely. Um, other games. Uh, let's go ahead and talk about the 12 games of Christmas. Oh, please. So please, this is please. a series we just started. Um, I did the first one. Tom tried to do the first one. Uh, laptop was not working properly, unfortunately. So I picked up the, the, I did the first real like full episode. 12 games of Christmas is a series where we all gift each other games on steam and then we stream the the receiver of the game will stream said game and you know it's it, we go into it completely blind i didn't know what i was going to stream until i started streaming and then opened my steam account saw the gift installed it got everything set up and played it's kind of rocky in the beginning uh this particular game was a little frustrating to set up but it seemed um, like the visuals or not the visuals but just like the window capture of it was really weird 
Yeah, yeah, I had it was OBS versus the game weird setup. The actual game it doesn't take anything to set up. Um but the game was down well and our uh lovely podcaster Tom got this for me. Thank you, Tom. Yep. <laughs> um I received mercy from Tom because part of this series that could be funny is if one of us were to gift a really crappy game to somebody and then they have to stream it and play it for an hour. Yep. <laughs> would be Don't worry, that'll happen. Yeah, I'm sure that'll happen. I'm, I'm waiting for my but, gift um, from Tom. Yeah, <laughs> I, I totally expected, honestly, Tom's gift because he was the one that kind of mentioned this when we were talking about doing the series. Like, you know, mm-hmm. we could do the whole... What do they call he was white the elephant, most excited about it. White elephant gift. <laughs> yeah. To, to be fair, make- I, I actually I gave you that gift because I wanted to hear if it was good or not, so I would know if I needed to buy it. <laughs> wow. <laughs> what Damn. a dick move. Right? That's cl- that's I really, close I really, to self gift. I am really like interested in this game, and I wanted to know. Ah, should I spend the whatever on this? And so yeah, there you go. So I, don't so know, it, I don't know. I don't know how much that game is, but. I like actually four really, bucks. It was yeah. really cheap. Nice. Yeah, Tom. I think you would like this uh, especially. Okay. Um, the game was Good. called Down. The game was called Downwell. Um, it's like a really retro style, like eight bit sound soundtrack retro style. Um, the color palette is like three colors. Um, look like a Game Boy a, game. Yeah, it did. <laughs> It's a platformer, but instead of running to the right, you're constantly falling down. Hence the name Down Well. And the thing you are falling down is a well. Hence the name oh. Down oh. Well. <laughs> so in a game, oh. Down oh. Well, Damn. you're going yes. down a well? You're going down a well. Yes. Really? Yeah, Blowing precisely. my mind, man. So Blowing my mind. Your character has gun boots. Nice. So like, you uh, can shoot your gun down from your boots as you're falling and that's Hmm. the main mechanic of the game so certain blocks yeah there will obviously be platforms you can land on um you get so many shots based on whatever your charge is for whatever gun attachment thing you have Uh, you get so many shots midair and then you have to land on something to reload and then you can can continue to shoot from there so something i didn't pay attention to if you land Mm -hmm. on an enemy does that recharge your shots uh yes it does okay that's so you can it's kind of the mario thing you can land on top of and most enemies some enemies you can't do this with but you can land on top of some enemies and it'll kill them and then you get your charge back and you can get these really long crazy combos going on for that too and you get points for that um but it's kind of set up like a i don't want to say rogue light because it's that gets thrown around too much but um, it's actually more set up like Mario. You've got level 1, 1, 1 1, 1 2, 1 3, 2 1, 2 2. And uh, it's kind of hard. I think the furthest I got was 2 2. Hmm, it's pretty good. I think that's what it was. And the thing is, it is random every time. So you yeah. can't memorize a level. Mm-hmm. You can't just get muscle Correct. memory of all fall right, left, jump, down, shoot. Yeah. Good. Yeah, but you're falling and shooting down at these enemies, and then you can also shoot through some of the blocks, like the platforms you can land on. You can shoot through those and keep falling. Um, and then, like halfway down the well, you might come into this little bubble thing, and you walk into the bubble, and there's a shop, and you can use some of the points you got to buy items. Or it might be uh, just a room with a different weapon in it, or like a bit of health. Um, multiple shots that you can do. There's like a machine gun, there's a shotgun, there's a triple shot, there's, you know, different different gun boots and then after each level you get to select from one of three item upgrades it might be you know you can jump on the corpses of the enemies to heal yourself or it might be a drone that follows you around and also shoots or it might be something where every time you jump off of a platform there's an explosion that can hurt people that kind of thing so that keeps it interesting and then finally there are unlocks um, as I was playing, I kept unlocking pallets, which is the visual style of the game. So the, the base game, you've got a black background. Um, most of the things are white pixel art, and then you've got this, a lot of the enemies are red, and then your shots are red. Uh, one of the pallets is 
it's the same except everything that's red is green instead or everything that's red is blue instead and then i unlocked another one called uh g boy <laughs> yes this and one was great was, hmm. it looked exactly like a game boy game nice it had that yes. that you know two different shades of green one darker and duller than the other one that's so it cool. looked exactly like a game boy game i mean exactly i played through that a little bit i unlocked another one called v boy and that looked like the virtual boy everything uh-huh. was this deep vibrant red just red everything was red with the black background it was really cool looking so That's there so are cool. there are a number of these you can switch from and uh that it, it kept it interesting i kept getting unlocks it kept making me want to continue playing and you played that for a while actually yeah you, yeah, I, yeah. Played, I think a little over an hour i played i do want to call out one thing about this game i really liked most mm-hmm. games that go for this aesthetic they do this aesthetic, but they do it in a way that's not really true to the era. They may be mm-hmm. using right. slightly more audio yeah. options of what they could, or maybe or, a little more like, color uh, palette. Modern lighting systems, but with yes. the one thing that art. drives me crazy is when they use different size pixels yeah. for yeah. the <laughs> sprites over the regular. Uh-huh. Oh, that drives me crazy. This game felt like it could have been put on an NES console thrown into the oh. console and ran mm-hmm. the music was on oh, point yeah. the visuals were on yep. point the music was great mm-hmm. i really music enjoyed the music good. for the 8-bit it's good yeah i'm not one to sit down and just listen to 8-bit music but the soundtrack of this was really good everything I about the, gun, the game was just well done it was fun and it's uh it's a short i don't know i want to say short because i didn't even complete it but it's like this kind of small game uh you could just kind of pick it up whenever you want play some and you don't have to commit a lot to it you, you know you, you put into it whatever you want to there's a lot of fun it's good it's run based i love run based games yes bite size awesome. nature yep makes for a uh, good replayability so I'll, I'll definitely be picking that one up off and on again thanks again tom i appreciate the gift of course um, ha- happy to oblige I'm glad to have been able to review it for you so you know yes. whether or not you're gonna yes. buy yourself a copy i'm totally <laughs> going to buy myself a copy now yeah um, so other than Downwell, uh, the only other thing I played was Brawlhalla, which we all played last week after the podcast, which is part of our postcast community game night. We do Roots. this after every podcast. We play games with you and us and you and us and you. Yeah, and us. How'd you like Brawlhalla? So what, I was about to ask you guys the same thing. Um, I, it was okay, I guess. It was all right. I, I really it. didn't like it. I actually, I, I, I didn't play hated it at all. It. <laughs> I, I really liked it, especially some of the game modes. I thought were really fun, but I liked it. It's a I, the football simpler, mode was cool. it's a simpler yeah. Smash Brothers. Yeah. So I've never yeah. been much into Super Smash Brothers, so maybe that's why I didn't like it that much. You see, I've always but liked the brawling platformers. It didn't really catch me. That I mean, much. I don't mind them, but like this one for me, it, I just, I don't know. I just didn't like it. I didn't like. Mm-hmm most of it. it it's kind of a flavor thing for me though like i i just didn't like what i was experiencing not you know like i didn't like i don't know like i didn't like how it moved i didn't like how i can i didn't like how i was like you can kind of cheese things like the wall jumping thing got really cheesy there's a bunch of like i don't know it just, like throwing things seemed pretty like instantaneous so i could just like sit there and throw things at people and I don't know, maybe there's a maybe there's a deeper like a deeper game there somewhere, but I don't know. It has to be like a really good brawler for me to like really get behind because I don't really like brawlers. <laughs> but the football mode was amazing. I had a really good time with that. Yeah, that football mode was fun as fuck. Oh, it was so good. <laughs> I, I I agree with you guys on that. It was super cool. And the snowball shit while weird was really fun. And then what didn't help cool. is that we had RS. Boom! It seems to be a resident pro at the game. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. He was he was crashing. Him and Dark Soul, right? Wasn't Dark Soul the other one? Dark Soul was doing pretty good. Dark Soul's good at every video game. Him and RS are both just automatically good at everything. <laughs> this is true. Yeah, I played yeah. some Brawlhalla. It's a free to play beat 'em up like uh, Super Smash Brothers. If you want to try it maybe i mean you might like it some of us liked it and then also (laughs) this week's community game is trove it's kind of to look at for me it's mmo meets um minecraft kind of what yeah sort of hmm i mean i i went into it i i 
I did the initial launch of it and started mm-hmm. playing and playing around. Normally, we go in these games blind, um, but you know that's kind of bit us. So we've been kind of like trying to dive in a little bit and get a get a quick sample of the, the games. Now, um, okay. this one's pretty cool. There's like uh, you have to. So for anyone that's going to be joining us tonight, it's a very small download. Uh, and then after that, you have to sign in and make a little user account. But other than that, you're good to go right after that. Because uh, it is an MMO. You know, it is an MMO. You can go and group up with friends and go and fight. I did that. Uh, I did like the first little encounter fight. Um, the controls are, it controls really good. So I hope that like it carries over to everything else. You can have like a gigantic raids too, apparently. So I'm really excited to uh, play this with everybody. So we'll be playing collaboratively, not or cooperatively, rather. Yeah, that's the that's the angle. I'm assuming there's some PvP, but again, I I'm still going in kind of blind. I I, I got in there a little bit and ha- and talk with um, our resident pro Timotheus, who's been playing the crap out of this game. He's uh yeah. he's super amped about it, and he he won't be able to join us. So I was oh, trying to get all the steal all the knowledge I could from him. Um, Time zones. Yeah, <laughs> prior to the yeah. He's uh he's our EU friend, so he's uh he unfortunately it's going to be way too late for him to join us after the cast. But I really appreciate him spending the time and suggesting this title. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I played that. I played a bunch of games this week. It's been um, it's been kind of light, but I've been playing a lot of new games. Um, the the two that I really wanted to talk about that I really actually played <clears throat> was Trials and Trials Fusion and Hidden Agenda. Those are the two that I really spent some time on. I, I got into Trials Fusion just recently. Have you guys? Did you guys play the old the old one like on? I, I have actually played the old one no. and Trials Fusion, and they are so much fun. Oh my <laughs> god, they're so fun. They're like, they're one of those games that like knows what it needs to be and yeah. then makes it what it is. Like it's, yeah. it's so stupid and so simple, but system. oh my god. Yeah, so I mean, it, this is an Ubisoft title though. No, that really, really weirds me out. But it's yeah, a, it's a it's a form it, that's been happening since like the late '90s, early 2000s on Shockwave games and shit like that. So for those of yeah. you who don't know what we're talking about, it's it's like you're a little motorcycle and there's an obstacle course you have to get through while trying to balance your motorcycle, and you can fall backwards or forwards. You're just trying to stay upright through an obstacle course. If you go upside right, down, but you're a guy on the motorcycle though too. Yes. Like yeah. it's not just a motorcycle. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. you're you're a, you're a motorcycle, motorcycle rider. Yeah, if, go, I, this trials is a thing. Like it is a, like motorcycle, like this motorcycle, like climbing thing, like mm-hmm. motorcycle parkour. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's a thing, and it's pretty. It's pretty popular. It's pretty big, parkour. and it's absolutely insane. Parkour. If you if parkour. you ever get the chance parkour. to watch some trials, there's a bunch on like Red Bull TV. Um, but Trials Fusion is like that, but like kicked up a thousand notches. Um, but what really got me excited for this is I actually watched a bunch of people like speed running through it, which again mm-hmm. is like 90% of the reason I play other games <laughs> um, and they're doing absolutely outrageous things like going up like these custom levels that are absolutely nuts. And like, they're like doing these mechanics where they're like jumping and like landing with like their wheel, like cr- trapped in their fender and then like flinging themselves over obstacles and stuff. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, this game <laughs> looks insanely deep and just like diving into it for the first time um it was it was awesome there's there's like so much to do with the suspension and like preloading your jumps and like whether or not you hit the brake or gas in the air and like whether you flip or rotate or how you land it's all really deep and it's really cool because there's only two buttons and you know (laughs) left and right it's like gas brake left right that's all you do yeah that's it (laughs) so um so yeah, I'm really looking forward to going through that. I went through the first couple levels. It's been cool. There is like that Ubisoft touch where there's a whole bunch, there's a big giant transaction menu where nice. you can buy all sorts of like oh, hats God. and garb and stuff. Um, and like, there's not a lot of player customization except in that portion. <laughs> so like you have to buy all this shit in order for your character to look much different. But it doesn't affect the game, so like I don't like it, but I really like the game, and the games are super fun. It's like I had uh, I've been playing the mobile version of the same game, and that one 
is it is transaction hell like everything <laughs> really is super pay to win yeah oh. you can't even progress to the next level without watching an ad it's would you like to go Jesus. forward pay a dollar <laughs> yeah exactly you can buy yourself out of the ads with currency but it's only a limited amount of currency mm. and then you can buy yourself into the next level without watching uh with or you can buy yourself into the next group of levels uh in the same manner or you uh like if you want to upgrade your vehicle you you have to pay currency that you earn at a very slow rate or you can just buy all the currency and max out your your trials bike so it's just a bunch of bs Bullshit. it's like Good really God. really frustrating <laughs> um but uh but yeah no no that that game is super fun i really really enjoyed it um and do so so tom you said that you have it uh yes yes i've put a bunch of time into it uh but i do have it and i played a bit of it it's it's fun I so didn't one thing anywhere. that i'm I... no good at it oh shit well yeah. then never mind because <laughs> one thing that i noticed that's really cool about it is that there is a multiplayer level of it basically like oh. you have to get through the levels as fast as you can hmm. before like whoever's at the top of your friends list makes it hmm yeah and no, like you would, i have you would one, wreck me and i have one guy that i actually don't know who it is and uh, it's epic snack rage so if anyone knows who you are out there I think if I you know, know who, that who is. you are. Please tell us. Uh, yeah, I am please tell me who I am. Because I've been there's like I've been beating your your time, so you need to come back and beat my times. But there's one out. level <laughs> where they, this person did an insane like mechanical jump, and I don't know how they made it across. I have no idea. Hmm. I have no clue. I I just spent like thirty minutes trying to make it th through this jump. Not possible the way they did it. I think they hmm. cheated. I'm convinced Clearly they cheated. Hacks. Absolutely cheated. Yeah. Yeah, if I can't do it, they cheated. So <laughs> makes a lot of sense. Yeah. <laughs> no, but that game was great. Um if anybody is playing, add me on Ubisoft, I'll <clears throat> and beat all my times so then I, I have to get O C D and come back and play them again. <laughs> so you have to install Uplay to play this? Yeah. Well hold on. Unfortunately. I, I thought I thought I had this on Steam. Uh, maybe we've got one of the yeah, other Yeah, I have it games. on Steam too, but I have, but it launches through Uplay. Oh, oh does yeah, it? yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah. The old, uh, yeah, because I have the old Switcheroo. Far, Far Cry. Cry. Yeah. 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 Far Far Cry 3 on Steam. Yep. And I yeah. And it on Steam and then it opens Uplay and then Uplay opens it. <laughs> I tried to play Blood Dragon recently in the same way and it crashed. So I was like really nervous when it launched Play. I was like, no. <laughs> like please i really wanted to and it launched and it worked fine so i'm like all right cool i'll keep going um but yeah that was I, i'm pretty amped on that one that that was that was just as much fun as i thought it would be and that's all i'm looking for uh so in that hidden, kind of game what's, what's hidden agenda so hidden agenda yeah hidden agenda was awesome so hidden agenda is a um like kind of like a choose your own adventure kind of uh, game did you ever see um was it in until dawn mm. oh that sounds familiar is that okay the, um, that's a uh, zombie ish like kind game, of a right? horror game yeah. it, it's kind of a shropshire slasher killer thing with high school people and you and a better one uh there's a there's there's a number of things like this that happen where you make like rockstar did la noir mm -hmm. you yeah. remember that one Mm -hmm. So it's a yeah. lot like that where there's like there's something going on and you're like talking to people and like figuring out like you know get all the information and progress the story by making decisions right hmm. um in this one it's kind of like a Hannibal Lecter-esque situation where there's a um there's a guy uh that's out there that's that's killing uh that's killing people and there's and he's like rigs the bodies to explode and all this stuff he's called the trapper right and he's killing all these people and then when cops come to investigate the scene the cop dies right so he's a cop killer right that's that's the whole angle of it in a way right and they capture this guy that they think is him and he confesses to it and then he said then right after that he says i'm not the killer and then you have, and you know, the whole mystery ensues, and you have to figure out who the trapper is, right? Hmm. And it's really cool, like the story, right? But how you handle it, it's multiplayer. So you play with all of your friends on a couch with your mobile phone, and you make decisions. So, like, what do you say? Like, two options will populate on the screen, and it'll say like, uh, be aggressive and angry at them, or, or passive and 
say whoa i don't care right <laughs> and, or like or you'll be you're, in you're a getting really into the story <laughs> like oh i don't no, care what no, no, no. that guy i just don't give yeah, a shit exactly. fuck that guy right or like maybe you'll be like going down like some stairs you're like oh do you go quietly or do you go fast like what are you doing like yeah mm-hmm. there's a whole bunch of stuff like is there that. an option to like trip down the stairs uh, uh, yeah, yeah. The, it just kind of all happens right so the one thing that was really cool is that um, you have this option to overtake people. So there's a bunch of like little quick, basically everyone has to, in some cases, unanimously decide on one option or uh, the majority has to decide on one option and then the story progresses. But um, you can also overtake someone's, uh, overtake the whole decision and just be the solo decision maker. And it's it's just really, really cool how that all works. But uh, the big portion of it, so we played through it as um, co-op. So we there was no like thing going on. We just went through it normal co-op. So we just got the story together, right? <clears throat> but there's a versus mode, which everyone gets a hidden agenda, hence the point of the game, right? So everyone has to, um, like they're saying, oh, like, make sure that guy gets killed or make sure this guy goes free or, or prove that this person did nothing wrong. Mm-hmm. Right. So, so it's, it's a, it has a really cool layer to it. And I think we're going to definitely do another playthrough of that just in the, in like the versus aspect of it. But the game itself is fantastic. It's really, really fun. Um, they're the same people that did until Dawn. And again, I don't know if you guys mm. remember that one at all, but um People say that that one was better, so maybe we'll maybe we'll circle back on this concept with uh, uh, until dawn. But um, yeah, that's pretty much all I really want to get into too much. All the other games I kind of touched on. Uh, I don't. I want to circle back once I have more time on them. But yeah, so far those two were were the highlights for my week for sure. Very cool. Nice. That sounds uh, hidden agenda sounds interesting. Yeah, it's a blast. You should definitely get it play with friends on a couch <laughs> couch co-op games are amazing that one's a two-hour runtime now um mm-hmm. so if anybody actually wants to get it and play through it it was actually a pain in the ass to find the how the runtime of this game so it's two hours and it's broken into three chapters so it, and there's like a little like intermission portion on each one which i thought was great Boop. so yeah, yeah. Nice. Agenda. Time your intermission, I'm actually starting singing Offspring. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, Eric, what have you been playing? Um. Well, I guess I get into a little bit of Mario talk. Um, Indeed. And by that, I mean I'll let Tom start some Mario talk because he just recently got that. I did. I did. Oh, nice. Um. So every review I read about uh, Mario Odyssey is accurate. Uh, it is, I'm pretty sure I'm quoting somebody's review, uh, it is whimsical and fun and magical in only a way Mario games can be. Uh, the soundtrack is fantastic, it is fully orchestrated, it sounds amazing, it controls just wonderfully, except for when the Joy-Cons decide to disconnect, the left Joy-Con in particular. Um, <laughs> I, yes, I still have that problem, I need to send mine in. Send it in, Yep. Yeah. Yep, ship it out, get Nintendo to fix it, it is a known issue. Um, so that's annoying, but when playing in handheld mode, which is what I play in most of the time, it is wonderful. Um, the levels are extremely creative. Uh, I didn't think Mario was going to fit into the environments they were showing in all the trailers, but he does. Everything is just a shit ton of fun. The 2D areas are fantastic. They feel like the best parts of Mario Maker mixed with... (laughs) just weird cool 3d shit like i wanted to get to the top of this thing but i couldn't and then there was a pipe and i can become 2d mario and go up the wall like literally the wall has got like (laughs) blocks and shit that i climb up and i jump out of the top of this area and i become 3d mario again it is fucking ridiculous and it is so much fun i am only about four hours into the game um there is so much to do there is so much to find and there's stuff that i looked at it just like in breath of the wild and i was like how the fuck do I even do this? I don't even know where to begin. That's okay. I'll come back later. And I totally will come back later. I could see myself 100%ing <laughs> this game. I'm having a blast. It is it is worth every penny. I do not regret paying 60 bucks for it. And I'm only four hours in. I like That's the awesome. fact that you brought up Zelda 
because both of these, I've heard someone else bring this up and I have to agree with it. Um, they're both made by someone who's like, yeah, we liked these games growing up, but it's time we start reinventing these fucking games because damn it, they're getting old. Right. Outside of Mario, Mario had um, Galaxy and Galaxy was Galaxy very was unique, amazing. but it was still very small set pieces. The planet structures and everything are big, but what you actually do on them, everything's small. There wasn't a whole lot of exploring. What you're exploring was, is exploring the physics, not the area. Where here, both Breath of the Wild and Mario are just big ass areas. Uh, the one thing I do like about Mario is it has a game loop in it that Zelda really doesn't have. Zelda's game loop would be just explore, find going something, and explore more. Yeah, going in adventure. Where That's the game loop of Zelda. Mario has more of an actual game loop to it, which I like. It helps drive you through it. There are objectives, yeah. Yeah, and uh, the you nice thing is... You can ignore them, though. You can totally ignore them. I have gone off the beaten path in Mario games and said, eh, I don't really feel like climbing the top of that tower and attacking um, that dude. Not so, really. There is set things you have to do. Oh, no, no, no. I, I totally get that. To, to progress, yes. But I was able to say... I don't want to climb to the top of the pyramid. I'm instead going to go over here and still make oh, progress, yeah. still get moons, get coins, find some cool, weird shit that I hadn't discovered before. Yes, you, you can do that, but yeah. you have to do the loop or you yes, don't if, get by. If you want to move on, you do have to do the loop. You have to go, beat the boss, reset the world, it meet X number of moons, move on. Yeah. And it's a good loop. It's just, it, it is a repetitive loop you have yeah. to do. Um, but this, as I've said before, Mario meets Kirby. It's the only way to explain this game. Only way to explain this game. The hat is sense. Kirby. That makes sense. And it is why this game is so fucking unique. I, I, there, there was like weird shit that I didn't even expect, right? Like, like, okay, I can become a frog. Cool, whatever. The little onion guys are just so much fun to control. It doesn't matter what you have captured. It is fun to control. And I, I, think, I think that's the core component to all of the recent Nintendo games, uh, and really really all Nintendo games, all, I'm going to say even all good games, if the character itself is fun to control, whether we're talking about Trials, or, or Quop, or I Am Bread, or Mario, <laughs> or Zelda, or Overwatch, uh, unless your characters are fun mm. and engaging to control, uh, the game will fall apart. And Mario has this in spades. He is just a joy to move around. Yeah, well, from what I was looking at, too, some of the more complicated movements are done with, like, two buttons. Most of the movements yes. are done with two buttons. So, like, yeah. so like you have your jump, and then you have your slam or something like that. I don't know. But, but and you have your throw hat. Some, something weird like yeah. that. I don't so, know. the uh, most advanced get distance is uh, triple jump, throw hat, butt slam. While butt slamming, you have to hit the jump button again, which will dive to the hat as long as you hold the button, and then you jump again, then you butt slam again, and then you dive again. Yep. It's a very complex button move. Like, if you watched my stream last week, it took me a good about five minutes to get down that button configuration to yeah. actually do this motion. Yep. I am just oh, now wow. getting the hang of it. But the, the great <laughs> part is, to get your main objectives, right, to get through the story of the game, which I haven't done yet, you probably won't need those advanced jumps, right? To get everything, you probably will. But to get through the majority of the game, you don't have to get beyond a standard level of platforming. No, um, there's not much you have to do. There is a little bit of complexity that happens on the last level where you have to do a little bit of stuff, but it's nothing like that. Yeah, yeah. So you... You can play this game just extremely casually. You don't have to get good. It is there for bonus content. It's there if you want to get all of the moons, but you absolutely do not have to. Uh, and I think that's that's great. You can hand this to, to a kid. You can hand this to your grandmother. You can hand this to uh, a person who plays Dark Souls all day, every day, and they have gotten good. Um, and everyone will be able to find something to have fun with. Um, it's it's a Mario game. I think everyone can have fun with this. Yeah. And two thirds of the game is post credits, which is lovely. Yeah. Yeah. Like I'm I'm <laughs> looking at I'm looking at the list of moons and shit that I have to do in these levels when I quote beat a level, right? To move on to the next one in the story. I haven't even touched ten percent of this content. It's great. Don't okay, I'm gonna go ahead and tell you this right now. Don't fuck with the levels. Beat the game, then fuck with the levels. I'm I'm fucking with the levels. I am having a good time. I'm I'm going through and I will beat the levels when I get annoyed with a level. Like the level I'm in right now, it's pretty annoying, so I'm gonna beat it really fast because I just I don't like the aesthetic. I don't like the way it looks, I don't like the soundtrack. Um which by the way, we gotta talk about that soundtrack. 
It is fantastic. Yeah. It is really good. It makes all the levels come alive. They feel really good. And I haven't even gotten to the best stage. I was going to say, you haven't even gotten to the good music yet. Yeah, I haven't. <laughs> and I, I hear that that's like, that is the, the point where the mic drops for Mario Odyssey is when you get to New Donk City, when you get to, uh, I think it's called the Metro Kingdom. Uh, it's when the entire game opens up and you're like, holy shit. Okay. This is the Mario game. They do some stuff in that kingdom that it is fan service, it is new, it is inventive, and it is just mm -hmm. really, really good. Well, yeah. all, all Mario in a bathing suit, you're right. Yeah. All Mario's, really all Nintendo games, <laughs> always have good music. I, I can play... This, yes, is, I this, is, this is even better. This is This great. is really good. This is some of Nintendo's best work. You, it, th that's actually one of the things I missed... Um, the music Breath of the Wild had is really, really, really fucking good, but there's so little of it because the, there, there aren't set pieces, right? There are some like small little areas, but the majority of the game is this wide open nothingness where you're listening to the sounds of nature with sometimes a tiny wisp of piano will fly by. Um, <laughs> but Mario does not have that problem. The, the game is all big set pieces and you are here in this world doing these things on this objective and this is how the world sounds so get used to it um luckily, like that yeah luckily the music is really 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 good um yeah yeah there's something to be said for sure over like big giant sprawling emptiness versus like tight dense gameplay you know sometimes sometimes like traveling for 10 hours in a straight line not doing anything isn't fun <laughs> and, yeah. and sometimes when you're in like a really dense like densely packed area full of good content it's just so much better sometimes i just feel like that's that's better yeah it's and it's full it is very full. that's awesome yeah it, it seems extremely I've, dense well I, I talk about it a lot and i'm going to talk about it again but speedrunning in this game is starting up right now so if you ever wanted to get into speedrunning and watching speedrunning this is the best time because this is when all the new discoveries are going to be made when people start doing like crazy like absolutely outlandish like maneuvering it's going to get absolutely insane right now because all the routes are being made there's a thousand routes that everyone's coming up with to get the most i think it's moons um if you if this is the time to get on board for sure this will be it's like the start of a new mario 64 that's what this feels like a new super mario sunshine run like that's how popular this one's gonna be this is gonna be hmm. i i saw bad. i saw some notes that you had where you said it's a great bite-sized game and i play this on the bus i would totally agree i can hop on i can play for 15 ish minutes and i can get out and feel like i've done something yeah most i got some coins i got a moon like whatever i can pick it up and put it down most moons you can get within five minutes yeah it it feels great for a pick up play and put it back down game it is a wonderful portable game and I'm so excited that that there's a, like a hardcore Mario game on Nintendo's hardcore sort of console, sort of handheld game that functions like a beautiful portable game. It makes me really happy for the future of the Switch. It does, but then again, it's Nintendo. Nintendo works fucking wizardry on their own games. They really do. Yeah. They do. Anyway, I'm totally a fanboy. What else you been playing? Oh, oh, we're just we're just gonna get right to me. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, okay. So other than Odyssey, uh, got in some Dota. I know you were playing some Dota. We we're playing today. Yeah. Um, I realize uh, over the past week I am the worst Dota teacher I've ever seen. Uh, I am. <laughs> I am terrible. I'm like, okay, there are lanes and there are guys, and you got to get the last hit. You like hit them, hit them to kill them. Oh, also, you should buy items. Yeah. No. Go do, go to the guide. It'll tell you what to buy. No. No. You you gotta. Okay. Hit that button. Okay, good. Why? Why did you buy that? I don't know. It told you to. Go go do this. Oh, no, don't play that guy. Oh, God, you played Meepo. Why did you pick Meepo? Oh, fuck. Now we're lo we lost. By the way, it's your second game. Let's go hard bots. Yeah, I was playing with Tom earlier this week. His buddy never played before. He goes with... He tries doing custom bots, which would be even harder. And now he's like, nah, we'll just go to hard bots. And I'm looking back. I'm like, when we first started playing, it took us about a month of playing to where we'd consistently beat those. And you're yeah. throwing your buddy on it his second ever time. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm a fucking terrible teacher. I am awful. So I played some Dota. Dota's fun. Um, they slightly changed the way turbo mode works. It's no longer instant bias for some items. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, it, um, like they've got a super fast courier. 
Um, that doesn't, I mean, it takes seconds, but a courier does have to get to you. And I think, I think that's because what the pros were doing is they would buy a bunch of items, like a bunch of like uh, defense items, have people, you know, attack them just to shave off some of that damage and then quickly resell their items again. So now there's a slight delay between buying and you getting the item. I think. Don't quote me on that. Um, but yeah, it's it's slightly changed. Uh, it doesn't ruin the game by any means. Um, other than that, Overwatch, it's cool. Still loving it. Uh, Dark Souls 3, Josh and I played. We're, we're making progress, which is nice. Oh yeah, man. It's It's we're been really there. nice. Um, it's, it's been hat, hats, hats and hats and hats and more hats. Oh yeah, so many hats. <laughs> we're, absolutely we're playing check out Souls. the... Yeah, absolutely check out the... Uh, these videos once we get them posted or not, not even the video like really go to the signed. vod and hit pause yeah. and just look at josh's hat that's all you gotta do that's that's, that's a, you'll, you'll really understand ridiculously though. oversized witch's hat yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's good i like that um other than that i played a new game uh i installed heroes of the storm which is blizzard uh blizzard's version of dota um and it it's not good um it's not good no, it's it's not. It is a MOBA. <laughs> it is. It is a MOBA, but that doesn't make it bad. Um, I don't like it. It feels like baby's first MOBA. Um, everything is really dumbed down. The heroes are really like they're they're spongy. They are not bullet sponges. I guess like magic or sword sponges. I guess you could call them. Um, they're hard to knock over most of the time. The characters to me aren't very interesting, which is really a crime because it's a fucking Blizzard game. Um, the the abilities are okay. The game modes are it's it's there. I I don't know. It it's like it took the MOBA formula. It took Dota and then stripped out literally everything and then made it, everyone super tough and tanky and said okay you can play the MOBA half the time I didn't feel like I had any impact on the matches at all I just sort of hmm. was there sometimes I took a turret which is their version of a tower uh, there are there are walls and I don't know like why you would ever defeat a wall in this place it doesn't really make much sense to me there are certain boss characters that you will defeat and they will like march forward and attack bases for you which I guess is kind of cool there are hmm. mounts which you can like stand still for a couple seconds and like summon a horse under you. Um, but why Blizzard missed the boat and said, oh, everyone rides horses instead of, you know, the people from Starcraft riding, you know, a ship that came from the Starcraft universe or, um, you know, the people from Overwatch riding a payload or something, something that connects them to the game. But no, everybody just gets a fucking horse. Um, it's, it's just missing a lot of love and care that most Blizzard games are known for. Um, it's missing the, from what I see, the technical depth to make it a MOBA worth playing for long periods of time. It's not a bad game. It's just not very good. Yeah, I yeah. never have, never will. I'll be honest about that. Yeah, I, I mean, if you're new to MOBAs, if you're new to the entire genre, it's not a bad thing taking a look. It's free to play, right? So you can just pull it and play it. Um, I, there just wasn't anything keeping me there. Uh, but yeah, other than that, that's, that's all I've been playing. Uh, so Eric, how about you? Um, really just two more things I'm going to add other games, um, has been heroes, been doing a little bit more of that. Finally beat it for the seventh run. Yeah. Seventh I've had, run. Holy crap. Only the seventh time Damn. I've beat a run. It's really fucking hard. This game is super hard, super good, super hard. Um, it's. Darkest Dungeon meets Isaac. Um, really difficult. But finally got my seventh one. Uh, I think I got a good system. I'm going to try running a few more times, see if it works. Um, nice. Cool. Then I picked up a game. Um, I'm a fan of growing numbers. I love to watch numbers grow. That is the reason <laughs> I play most games. I play MMOs, all that kind of stuff. Um, but I was sitting on Steam and I saw my buddy uh, Vosbeck was playing idle champions of the forgotten realms and instantly it grabs me because i'm like forgotten realms i like forgotten realm stuff i was a big um ari salvatore guy i'm like Let me look into salvatore this. i and, read a lot of those in high school yeah same here and that's why it caught my eye and then i realized oh this is based off brunor and the sword coast this is the exact realm area where um the whole driss saga went 
So I've downloaded the game, and what it is, it's a idle clicker kind of game where you can click to damage people, but you also, as you kill people, you get money. You can add new people to your party with more money. You can form mm -hmm. your party in certain ways to where their different abilities help each other. And then you just sit there and watch them kill people and then go to the next, go to the next, go to the next. And you use the money to upgrade them in certain ways or apply items in certain ways or unlock new people. But there's always a set list of progression of people. The first person's 50, the next person's 1,000, the next person's 10,000, and it goes like that. It's really interesting because it takes the g uh, generic, boring clicker model, applies actual strategy on top of it. It's really interesting. It's free to play. There's definitely a pay to win aspect of it. Uh, you don't have to. I'm completely bypassing that and saying, fuck it, I'll just wait it out. But it's really nice. Like I had it up all day while I was doing laundry. It's nice. nice. I enjoy it. Um, I like watching numbers grow. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you keep opening credit cards. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Dang. But just open some, them, some fill them. But when the debt <laughs> goes up, it's only good at first. And then it kind of feels bad, man. Does it? Then I have to open up a new credit card. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's true. Yeah. Open up another one to pay off the one you just opened up. Yeah, but it has to be yeah. big enough to still buy more stuff. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, of course. <laughs> Duh. You got to okay. add on. You can't. Yeah, this is credit 101, man. Come on. <laughs> 72 finance cast right here. <laughs> anyway, I think that's about all we got for game news. For the love of God, don't take that finance advice. That wasn't game news. Take it's all of the game finance news. advice. Yeah, I said that was all the game talk we had. About to get in some game news right now. Um, real quick stuff. Uh, Telltale Games lays off 90 employees. That is a quarter of their staff. Ooh. Yeah. So um, there's, I mean, obviously there are bad things about this. I, I like Telltale. I like some of the games they've done. Apparently it hasn't been enough to keep the studio afloat. Um, yeah. But, you know, they, they make games. They make one type of game. And it kind of, I think, has fallen out of vogue. It, it hit really yeah, hard right. with The Walking yeah. Dead. Yeah. And, and then, then after that, I think it's been lukewarm at best for them. Yeah, I would agree. I think The the Wolf Among Us got a lot of praise, too. It did. Yeah. It but did. I mean, like, their right. Game of Thrones, I've heard, isn't the greatest. Mm. Mm. And I honestly, as anticipating or as hyped as I was, Tales of the Borderlands, I never heard anything about it since it came out. I, I think, honestly, their model might be hurting them. So, you know, like, they came out with a Batman Telltale game. But uh, as far as I know, and that's part of this problem, as far as I know, um, all of the episodes haven't been released yet, right? Because they're doing piecemeal things. But I don't want to buy the game and have, you know, two out of the five episodes. I want the whole fucking thing. So when the game first comes out, I'm like, ah, that's, that's cool. That's nice that it's out. But I'm going to wait until I can just buy it all at once. And then I never do. It's weird. If they was to be able to churn them out quicker, I think I'd yeah. be okay with it. Like, like one, one every couple weeks or something, even right? A, even a month, I think, would be okay. Really? I, I'm not okay with a month. I think I'd even be okay with a month. Like because, two, two weeks is even still pretty far for me. Like if it was one a week, oh yeah, that's, that's done. I, I don't even care at that point. But mm -hmm. I don't know. I, I don't think their model is doing them any favors. And I, I hope Telltale doesn't go under. I think they're a good company. They've done good things. I mean, the Walking Dead game did amazing things for writing in games. It did fantastic oh, things yeah. for writing in games. Yeah, that was, was a fantastic story. Yeah, it, it really is. Um, I just don't want them to go away. And it, it bums me that, that that's slowly happening. So I think one thing that did bite them eventually is the idea of their games was you control the game. And I think after, you know, the first year, people started to see, you know what? You really don't. Everything That's ties true. back into the end. Everything ties back into the same story. It's just character A dies or character B dies, but in the end, character A or character B don't matter in the story. And the same thing happened in The Walking Dead. I'm not going to give details, but we all know the ending. And we mm -hmm. all know that it didn't matter what the fuck you did. Yeah. That same ending's happening. Yeah, it's just his dialogue will change a little bit. That doesn't mean the choice is meaningless, though. It absolutely does. I, I don't know. No, I disagree does. with you. I disagree with you. Nothing the, changes in the game based the on The consequence is meaningless. Thinking, the choice yeah. is not. Right. Exactly. If the choice evokes an emotion in the player, then it is not a worthless choice. If the consequence evokes an emotion in the player, then it is not a worthless consequence. The consequence of all of your choices in The Walking Dead were absolutely meaningless. The choices were not because the choices made you feel a certain way. 
But mm-hmm. it's just frustrating exactly. to know that if you, this. if you kill player A instead of B, player A or B will die later in the place that player A would have if you chose B. They literally just had swapping characters. Right. Yeah, Some that's right. I think is a little different, but yeah, it's, but you know, still, it uh, it's, it's kind of more about the feelings you get making the choices than the results of said choices. It's just it feels cheap to me if it's only invoking the emotion but actually doing nothing. Mm. That because it's just to me whenever I'm doing a choose your own adventure, I want my choice to make my adventure. It's not a yeah, but it's not a choose your own adventure. It's more of a choose some things on this adventure. That's choose the dialogue for out. this morning. <laughs> yeah. Choose your yeah, dialogue for this movie that you're actually not going to make a difference. I don't know in. how to articulate it right. I think Tom Tom pretty much said what I feel. But either way, I think that's enough time on that one. But yeah, they're um, they're in uh, not in a good spot right now. Yeah. Uh, Take Two Games will be releasing games with microtransactions only. Yeah. And for those of you who aren't in the know, Take Two Games is actually the parent company of Rockstar. So your Grand Theft Autos, your Red Dead Redemptions. Uh, going forward, every game Take Two or a subsidiary puts out will have microtransactions. Um, a whopping like 40 ish, over 40% of their revenue this year came from microtransactions. Well, that's because their games. When's the last time they released a game? 2011? Wait, are, are we. Yeah, I guess they have been re releasing the same game over and over and over again, which is GTA 5. Well, they're not re releasing. It's just out and people are still picking it up. Yeah. So that's what I'm saying. Of well, course I mean, they the, keep adding stuff to it. They're well, adding and a lot. And that's they where their microtransactions come in. That is their right. entire business model right now. It isn't games, it's things in the game. Yeah. Mm hmm. Yeah, I this this really bums me out because apparently microtransactions work when 40-ish percent of Take Two's fucking revenue for the year is microtransactions, somebody is buying this shit. Somebody. So the parent company did what a business would do, right? They made a logical choice. It sucks for the gamers, but it's a logical choice because we keep buying into this shit and they said, hmm, microtransactions are really hot. They make our finances look great. The stockholders fucking love it. Let's make everything have microtransactions. And so Rockstar announced recently that yes, Red Dead Redemption 2 will have microtransactions. So fuck you people who are buying this shit and fuck you take two. But we don't know what the microtransactions are. Exactly. That is true. There's still an option of... And in all fairness, even even GTA's microtransactions weren't a big deal. No, they they were. They were. So did you you put substantial time into uh, GTA Online? uh, Yeah, I did. If you buy your your cars, your armor, your guns, if you buy all that shit, you are at a substantial advantage to anyone who hasn't dropped real-world money. Well, yeah. Advantage. I mean, I mean, absolutely. But at the same time, like when you play GTA, like you don't play any PvP. I don't. I don't think I've ever played any PvP. And all the PVE stuff is just fun. Fun with friends. It's just a good time with friends. I, I like I, it depends PvE on how stuff. you play it, though. Yeah. It depends on how you play it. Like if you play the PVE stuff, like all those guns and weapons, you can just drop for your friends too. So if like you've been playing for a long time and you have all these weapons unlocked, you can just drop them for your friends and they can play through the whole session with those guns. So I, I did a, a good amount of the PVP. Um, and That's every, every time, yeah, every time I fucking <laughs> died, it was some guy who had, you know, tricked out gear because he, you know, threw a, a 10 at Rockstar. Or a 20 oh, at Rockstar. well, then it sounds like you had a much better experience with the PVP than I did. <laughs> PVP than I did. You, you, you wake up in the morning, walk outside your door, and you get sniped from someone in outer space because that game gets <laughs> hacked more than any other game I've ever that, played. That in is that's life. very true. I, honestly, I do not know why people <laughs> drop money on a game that you could just use a fucking, like, Genesis-style game genie and fucking hack the game worse than anything else I've ever seen. Hack it worse than most fucking people Equifax. Do. Because a lot Actually, of people don't play it for the PvP. GTA 5... No, yeah, most GTA, people don't. GTA Online is more broken than Equifax from a security standpoint. But it's a lot of fun. <laughs> it's sometimes, like, honestly... You, you, you want to know, you know, you know what I did when I played GTA 5 on a lot of, a lot of occasions? Got in my car with some friends and we just drove down the road. 
<laughs> it's it's That's a good time. literally what we did. It's a it's, fucking it's a good blast. time. Now you so, have American Truck Simulator to do that. Yeah, but you can't all like, in ass. <laughs> yeah. All in ass. <laughs> I don't know. This, anyway, this like, really bums it, me out. I hope this won't ruin Red Dead Redemption Two, but we'll we'll just have to see it. I doubt if it it's will. as if it's as buried as as it is in GTA Five. I'm cool with it. If it's in your face and you can't do anything without it, then no. I mean, they kept releasing new content, new updates, probably 100 percent because of this for free. The multiplayer, yeah. they keep adding levels and depth to that multiplayer of GTA 5. Like, when I bought GTA 5 and what it is now, the multiplayer is totally different. The level of, like, of crazy shit you can do now is totally different. The races, everything, every single aspect, all the fun things I do with my friends are all updated for free. So I don't know yeah. if it's a bad business model because they're pulling in all this money and they're giving us free content in return. I, I so as much feel... as I want to be, as much as I want to be a grumpy gamer about about like uh, microtransactions, I'm getting a shitload of free content that I can play with my friends. So I can't really be mad at Rockstar in this situation. This, this ties into uh, another story we have, where Overwatch's director said, "Hey." Our loot boxes aren't evil. Some of them might be, but ours totally aren't. And, you know, I kind of agree with the Overwatch and Valve style microtransactions, right? Not necessarily loot boxes, but if I can buy cosmetic shit, like if I can buy a shirt in Grand Theft Auto Online that says, fuck you, um, that's totally fine with me. But if I can buy a sniper rifle that can kill you from space, that's not fine yep. with me, nope. right? I can't buy mm -hmm. anything in Dota or Overwatch to give me a competitive advantage. If GTA Online was that way, I'd be totally fine with charging a hundred dollars for a gold-plated automobile. At but, the same but that's time, not the it's case. also it's also not the same though. Like because those are actual competitive games. Like GTA is not a competitive game. I, I get it. Yeah. Like, there's no, totally yeah. there's it. no aspect of it. That's, but it sucks and, going into that game not wanting to drop a bunch of money and getting fucking wrecked by everybody. That it's a shitty experience. Mm. Then just go so with I friends and wreck. I, I dropped it. As well as, I want to be honest about this right now. How many of you guys are really anticipating playing Red Dead Redemption 2 online? Because how many of you actually oh, did yeah. online on the first one? Yeah, I wasn't planning on playing it online at all. Um, I never played the online of the first one. I did one. do the online in the first one, and that makes me say I am not enticed to do this. However, with GTA Online, I understand it could change, but I'm not buying Red Dead Redemption for online. Oh, yeah, no, 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 probably yeah. not. So put all the like, microtransactions would... you want in it. I'm not playing online. That's not my cup of tea for that game. I mean, I'll absolutely play online if I buy it. It's not like I'm just like, oh, yeah, I'm, well, not, I'm not playing that. Yeah, um, it's not like, oh, fuck. I'm just saying that's not why I'm getting the game. <laughs> oh, absolutely not. No, I'm, I'm playing for the story. Rockstar stories have been amazing. I really am super amped about uh, Red Dead coming back. It's going to be super, super cool. But, I mean, online might be fun. Uh, Grand Theft Horse with friends sounds really enticing. <laughs> Grand Theft Horse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Totally down for Grand Theft Horse. All right. Well, let's hammer out a few more of these real uh, quick. Speaking of Overwatch, right. Overwatch has a free weekend starting November 19th. So if you want to play it, get to it. I'm actually looking um, forward to this. November 17th? 17th. I said 14th. My bad. It's 17. You said 1 19th. 7. Anyway. Okay. Yeah. okay. Anyway, 1 7, November. Do it. Um, we have some news with EA, which actually um, may come shock to some of you guys because you didn't know that it wasn't this way anyway. <laughs> EA has recently purchased Respawn, the developers behind Titanfall 2. What? So for a lot of people, oh. that's like, I thought they already owned them. No, EA was only the publisher. Now EA is gotcha. the owner. Okay. So, um, so be ready for uh, possibly some changes in the way that second one or third one's going to be. After the second one was pretty fucking I hope awesome. Loot boxes ruin it. I hope they don't ruin it. I hope they don't make it just online or multiplayer only like the first one. They'll probably they just make, make it. it popular and lucrative. To be hopefully, fair. hopefully it doesn't get made <laughs> at all, and EA just like gets swallowed into a hell pit or something like that. That would be great. They'll probably just get the attention that Titanfall franchise deserves. Because EA seems yeah, to be good at true. what they do, <laughs> unfortunately. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, they're they're doing it. They're doing they're they're doing it. <laughs> and then also some Dota two news. Uh, there's some tournament issues where some scheduling conflicts has actually led to teams to have to forfeit. Yeah, this is this is kind of shitty. So there were two no show forfeits because 
there were two tournaments going on at the same time and they said oh we'll totally work around those issues and when there were issues they said hmm the other tournament should work around our issues so you should do that oh. and nothing got solved in time and two teams had to you know forfeit their matches and it just sucks for everyone yeah you um, hate to see it yeah, yeah. Some, some people like uh ld which is a really famous personality in the dota world um he, he complained and said hey look this has been an issue and people have been working around it for nearly 10 years um one of the solutions would be to have you know an overarching you know board of dota or, or, or just like a primary league instead of having all these random tournaments being everywhere some sort of oversight board i disagree with that personally but you know we'll, we'll have should. to see where it goes i i don't think it'd be a bad thing to have valve schedule these but then again you know does valve really have the resources to manage random ass tournaments everywhere they might they they they, they might. might they should because if they do then it makes it more closer to a like a quote unquote valid sport right like that's a step in the right direction as far as like calling esports an actual sport they Maybe. to have i mean yeah there's right. always that but i mean you we could, we've had this argument yeah you, you right, could we've get talked something about it, close right? to blizzard's overwatch league which actually is also in the news um we now have some numbers around seasons and prize pools, uh, and frankly, they're fucking underwhelming. Um, regular season placement bonuses. Uh, first place, $300,000. Second place, $200,000. Uh, for championship playoffs, if you win everything, take home the gold, you get $100 million. Or, I'm sorry, not $100 million. You get $1 million. Ooh. Yeah, $1 million. Just <laughs> yeah, one. Holy shit. Not yeah. 100 just $1 million. Uh, the runner-up will get $400,000. I, now, here's something I think you're failing to actually call out. All these players are signed to contracts that pay money on top of this. Yes, that's yeah, true. That that's is true. very but, important. That's but it's, it's yes, I get the semantic differences. And it is good. It is absolutely good that they've got contracts and they're getting paid. And this is a job. It's not just I win or I don't eat. Um, but when you look at $3 million total prize pool for, for everything um, versus the International's 26 it doesn't look good in comparison when you're looking at this the surface, is, which is, this is what also most people the first look official at. league. It is. It it's is also the first one. I, no, I'm I, kind of wondering if people will even take this seriously because the prize money is so low compared to something like Dota. How much wasn't that first contract like a hundred thousand dollars for a know. player? I do not know. Winning nothing. The the money. On, yeah. Okay, look at all other sports though. You don't get a huge check for everyone because you win the Super Bowl. That doesn't happen, or because you win the World Series. This is, this is status quo. When you have official paychecks guaranteeing you money, the organization will get more out of your win because your organization is guaranteeing you pay regardless of how much you suck. Yeah, yeah. I, I get it. I, I think, again, I think it'll be interesting. We're going to have to see where this goes. I just look at, you know, 3 million compared to 26, and I know that that's the number people are going to be looking at, and they're going to miss the point, and they're going to mm -hmm. discount this. And that's what I'm afraid of happening. Yeah, I don't think it will. I don't think it'll be interesting because they they got more power because they have connections to TV in that league now. Uh we'll we'll see. But right. Either way, um, Nintendo Switch finally getting a Hulu app, which is hopefully signs of things to come. I'm hoping. I mean, that yeah. on the Switch sounds great. That would be awesome. Except for one thing, the Switch isn't a cellular receiving device no but but with newer netflix apps on phones you can download episodes so if i could download stranger yeah. things and watch it on a bigger screen than my tiny shitty little phone screen on the bus oh sign me up get an sd card the shitty storage is small no i've got i've got the the fucking sd card i can download all the episodes on my phone just fine no what i'm saying is the switch has small storage get oh, the sd card i've got like a 200 yeah, gig sd yeah. card already it's a news flash yeah. for everyone else tom oh okay i thought you were talking to me you're looking at me and talking to them i was talking to the mic which no, is no, between you, gotta, you and hey. i you're looking at me you gotta look at them over there that way in all in all, in all fairness the people that are not watching visually have no idea right <laughs> they're over there correct yes so they they're didn't. over there all of you out there all 30 of you and you're, then, wait, you're giving us that many? You think there's actually yeah. like 30 whole people? 
Also, anyway, uh, let's push this forward. Uh, <laughs> a little more Switch news. Last bit of news we have for you is Rocket League coming to the Switch 14th. Final will be here, and it is complete crossplay. Yeah, that's the biggest portion of that. I'm surprised it's complete crossplay. Crossplay, that's awesome. Well, you see, Nintendo, first, Nintendo doesn't know enough about the internet to actually deny Psyonix the ability to do crossplay. So when they said, hey, can they crossplay, you know, across the internet, this worldwide computer network? And Nintendo's like, an inner what? And Psyonix is like, got it, bro. Got it. All nah. right. You got to give Nintendo credit. Nintendo has played well with others on this. They, they brought have. Minecraft in their system, integrating Xbox Live yep. as Microsoft wanted. They did. They did. Microsoft plays well. They do. Sony needs to get their head out of their ass. Fuck you, Sony. Anyway, I think that's about all we got for the news this week. And in fact, I think that's all we, we got for We have some, some small releases to call out, though. Oh, yeah, we do have some releases uh, real quick. Doom on the Nintendo Switch. Rocket League on the Nintendo Switch. L.A. Noir on the Nintendo Switch, if you haven't bought it seven years ago. Uh, Sonic Forces is trash. Don't buy that. Need for Speed Payback, also trash. Don't buy that either. <laughs> okay, there's our releases for this week. Um, as Yay. I said a couple casts ago, the big releases <laughs> are done. Yeah, there is nothing stellar coming out outside of Battlefront 2. That is the last big title to launch, I think, this year. Yeah. And anyway, with that, uh, let's get the rundown. So if you're watching us on Twitch, sorry, we're having some network issues tonight again. Fuck Comcast. Um, you can always go to YouTube and watch these buffer free at our uh, YouTube channel at 72 Pin Connector. Unless your internet service provider is Comcast, in which case you will be buffering. <laughs> yes, you will. Um, if you're at YouTube, you can always come watch us live Saturday nights at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Be part of the chat. We're interactive. It's fun. We promise. Um, if you would like to comment about what we're doing on the cast, shitty to conversations, shitty topics, topics you'd like to hear, or the fact that my internet sucks and you would like to bitch about that too, you can tweet at us at, at 72 PC Podcast. And then also you can go to our website, pick up our RSS feeds for podcasts at uh, 72pinconnector.com. If you're a normal person, you can go through iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, Pocket Cast, any of those, and just look up 72 Pin Connector and find our audio podcast that way. And if you have a long-winded explanation on something we did wrong you'd like to see, you can always email us at fanmail at 72pinconnector.com. Is anything I'm forgetting this week, fellas? I honestly think that's it. Maybe the postcast game? Oh, yeah. yeah. Our postcast Post game. <laughs> postcast game. <laughs> Maybe. We did I'm, announce it earlier, but yes, I almost said yeah, trying. Still listening. Look us up, Trove. Trove, come Trove. to the Discord. It is attached to the Twitch. Scroll down, you'll see the link. Jump in. We'll also chat. post it in the chat. Yes, jump in, join us. It'll be a good time. Oh, and with that, until next time, y'all. Game on. See everybody. Bye. Bye. <laughs>